Hello everybody. This is part two in our video series on how to solve sets of systems of linear equations. Uh, as chemical engineers, we encounter lots of these systems of equations in courses such as mass and energy balances or reaction engineering. And so being able to do this quickly in a software package is really helpful for either checking your homework or learning how to do this when you actually get into the field and you don't want to solve by hand some of these more complicated sets of equations. So what I have here is the first software package we're going to look at is Excel. And you can do this in Excel, and it actually works pretty smoothly. We can use the Excel solver function to find um, the values for our variables that we're missing. So here we have the same mass balance problem that we were looking at in the previous example, where we were doing this by hand. And I've written it down here for you. And so if you want to, if you didn't watch that video and you want to look at the mass balance, you can pause it here and try and solve it um, until you get the set of linear equations, which we have. I have written here for you. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to move over to the next tab that I've set up, which is our solver tab, and I've written in the equations again. And what we need to do now is we need to set up our variables and we need to set up our formulas. So to start off with, solver sometimes is a little happier if we give them a starting variable to work with. So we're going to start off by making all of these ones. Um, eventually we're going to want to get the mass fractions, so let's get those set up as well. So the mass fraction of A in stream 1 is just M1A divided by M1 and then we can fill that down to get the mass fractions of the other of A and the other streams. Now we also need to set up our formulas. So our formula column is just going to be our equations, the left side of those equations. So for example, our formula for the first equation is going to be equal to M3, but we want to actually highlight the numerical value. The next one is going to be M3A. This one's going to be M1. Our next equation is M1a. Our next equation is M2 minus M1. And then our last equation is M2a minus M1a. All right, so we have our formula set up. Next, we need to put in the right side of the equation. Those are our desired values. So we're going to have 60, 6, 60, 14, 30, and 10. All right, so with that, we are now set up to run our solver. And what solver is going to do is it's going to, we're going to set it up so that it's going to iterate through and change these values until, subject to con the constraints that we set, that we want um, the formula value to equal our desired value. And um, <clears throat> what it should do after a very short amount of time is actually spit out the values of our variables that match what we found using the hand calcs in the last video. So let's give that a shot. So where we're going to go now is we're going to go to tools. And we're going to scroll down to solver. If you don't happen to have a solver button on your uh, option in your menu, what you need to do is go to Excel add-ins and then make sure that the solver add-in is checked. And you'll just hit OK once it's checked. You may have to restart the program, um, but I don't think so. I think it in it starts automatically. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up solvers. And I'm going to reset this because I was playing around in it previously and you don't want to see what I've already done. So what we're going to do is we're going to set an objective. Um, our objective here doesn't matter too much because it's basically going to be constrained by our uh, constraints listed below. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, OK, we're just going to hit our D2, sorry, our C2 is equal to the value of 60. If you have a value that is zero, that's a great one to put in because you can't, this is not a cell that's referenced, so you actually have to put in an actual value. So anytime you have a whole number, that would be a good one to stick in here. Again, it probably won't make a big difference because our constraints are gonna are gonna dictate what our values are gonna be. So what we're gonna do is next change our variable cells. So we're gonna highlight that range of variables here. Okay, and then we're gonna add our constraints. Now the cool thing that I just learned you can do is you can actually take a whole range, so we're going to say our formula range here is equal to our range here. And so basically what it's going to do is it's going to say, okay, in the same row, um, these values need to be equal. And so we're going to say, okay. And those are all constraints. So that's a lot faster than doing it one at a time, which is how I, I used to do it. So what we're going to do now, um, we don't have any unconstrained variables, so let's not worry about that at the moment. If for some reason you weren't constraining one of your equations, which 
I don't think that's a good idea in this type of problem. Um, you could make you could ensure that the variables are non-negative. Um, what we're going to do next is we're going to set our solving method. The simplex LP is used for linear problems, so that's the best choice here. And what we're going to since we're solving set of linear equations, and what we're going to do next is just hit the solve. All right, so solver will come back, and once it's iterated and either gone through its, its set number of iterations or it thinks it's found a solution subject to all the constraints, then it will pop up this dialog. Um, you can save it if you want to, but you don't have to. It will save your previous run um, so that you can do it again. And so what we see here is we've now found all our desired values and Excel has changed all of our variables to match. And if you went back and actually looked at the, the video that we did before, you'd see that, oh, this matches exactly what we got from our hand calculations, that's great. And because we had our mass fractions already set up, it does this automatically for us too. So we automatically have our mass fractions propagated. Let's reduce some of the sig figs on there. So that's it, that's how you're, how you're gonna solve this type of problem in Excel. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, we're also gonna look at two more software packages, MATLAB and Mathematica. So stay tuned for those in the next set of videos.